Hey guys, uh, okay, so I'm going to do a photo match here and um, try and show you how to um, use Match Photo in SketchUp. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go to Camera, Match New Photo, and that will bring up this dialog box. I have a picture of a Ford dealership that I took today. Um, I haven't edited this photo, so this is more of an instructional than how you'd actually do it. If you were going to really do this uh, building, then you get rid of these cars here um, so that in Photoshop so that you can have just a clean building to work with. Alright, so the first thing you want to do is take this red bar and put it to a, uh, a, um, a line on the building that goes this way, uh, and then you, you would want to zoom in a little bit and make sure that you got as close as possible to uh, the actual um, line of that building. Then the second line you'd want to make you want to make sure these red lines are on the same axis as uh, as each other. Um, so you're just going to be kind of kind of careful here, pretty precise, because if you're not careful, then uh, you can end up not lining up, and that'll cause trouble down the road. So I'm just going to continue doing this here, and uh, I guess I'll line it to this window. There. Be pretty good. So now the uh, the third thing you want to do is take this. Uh, oops. Well, this doesn't matter. Once you have it in line, you can put it anywhere, and it'll change. Um, it'll change the angle as you go through it. See, so it lines up everywhere. There's um, a line going that way. So I'm going to move it down here. It doesn't matter now that it's now that it's aligned. So I'm going to go to this corner here put it on that corner. Now as you can see that blue axis lines up pretty good uh, along that top on the vertical which is really important so um, now the next thing you want to do is scale this so that uh, it looks right so you can see I've left, uh, I forgot what his name is, Brian or something in this photo in this uh, sketchup so far so you're going to want to click on any of these axes and drag them so that the scale is adjusted. Now you can see that Brian or whatever his name is is actually getting smaller and here's a door over here so we can kind of make a judgment call of how tall this building is uh, I'm gonna say that he's about that tall because well maybe a little shorter so as you can see he would probably fit in that doorway just fine or, or in this car it makes kind of sense each one of these lines here is uh, five feet so so we're gonna assume that this door is about uh, yeah, this is a big door, apparently. I guess it's a car dealership, so it's got to be tall, but bad example. Anyway, uh, we're going to assume this building is, let's see, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 feet tall, which seems about right. So now that we've done the alignments and uh, putting this on the uh, corner here, we're going to say done, and that'll allow us to start building this building. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and rotate here using the third click, it's just the mouse wheel click and as you can see this picture is going to disappear. Right, so the only the reason why that happens is because this only works from one angle uh, because obviously the photo is only taken from one angle so uh, what you're going to want to do here is build from that the origin outward I'm going to stay there And as you can see, it just goes right along that building's edge. You can see it's getting a little less precise as we go on. And uh, in my experience, that's about as good as it gets. I mean, uh, it's, it's not a perfect science, so you kind of have to work with it. Now, this is, uh, this is getting a little bit out of tolerance here, but... We'll try and work with that. This is just a demonstration video. You can obviously fine tune it yourself and be really careful with your buildings, but um, I'm going to continue with the demonstration here. So I just use the push and pull tool to uh, sort of push this, uh, this one face through the rest of the building because we're going to sort of infer that this building uh, has this profile all the way down its shape. Uh, okay, so now here's some inferencing skills. You're going to have to sort of guess that this corner here starts right there and it's going to extend out on this red axis. I'm holding down the shift key to allow the uh, the uh, the pen tool to ride on just the red axis. 
and then we click and make the rest of this um, this uh, face here. And I'm not really quite sure why I was doing that, but let's bring this down to it. There we go. So now I'm gonna turn this and you can kind of see what's going on here what I'm starting to do is actually create the this building oh you can see that's I drew my line incorrectly and that's why it didn't work the first time so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the push and pull tool to pull this back to here and I think it actually goes even farther back so you want to click on your photo up top and it'll zoom back in which is a really cool effect now sometimes you see how I can't actually get behind it to push and pull it, pull it Sometimes you have to just single click it for a moment, click the photo here, as you can see I still have control of this, and uh, it's going to turn back in, and then you line it up with that line right there, like that, and as you can see it's really starting to look like a Ford dealership, so I'm just going to start to do a little bit of work here. something like that. Go back into our photo. Go back into our photo. Draw another line from the center of this over. Again, something like that. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase this, this little uh, area in here, so the line is left. Click the line that's going to highlight that whole line, then use the follow me tool to, whoa, I don't know if that did exactly what I wanted. Let's try it the other way. Let's try and delete this one. Click this is the follow me, and then click the area. Well, <laughs> Sorry, I didn't uh, didn't do this before. And test to see if it worked. Uh, I guess what I'm just going to do go back in here. It's always a problem solving thing. SketchUp is I'm not perfect at it yet, obviously. Okay, so we'll leave that out for now. Um, I'm just going to get rid of these lines here. I was trying to be fancy and do all this curved stuff. But here's what I do know how to do. So I'm going to get rid of Bryce, that's his name, now I remember. And uh, so we've sort of made the basic shape of this building. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and texture this this building with the current photo angle so uh, we're going to click this button here the project textures from photo and trim partially visible faces we'll say yes and just like that when we turn this building we're going to have just about exactly what's in the picture now some problems come in here uh, especially with that wall being gone let's see if I think I deleted that on accident We're going to just fill that in with a rectangle. Now we have our wall. Go back to our picture. Project photos from textures. We'll overwrite our existing materials and we'll shrimp partially visible faces. And as you can see, that's going to be much better. 
Now, the problem with this is from this from the angle that we were shooting at, it basically just laid the uh, picture over top of um, whatever it ran through, as if it was a plane going through this building. So things like this got a little bit cut off. And uh, also over here, you can see this, this wall, this edge, got, um, got cut off here. It worked, it worked over here, but it didn't work over here because this, this wall was in the way. So what we'll do is we will take our rectangle tool, draw this down here like that, right click, make unique texture, uh, and then we will draw a, another rectangle right here use our colors tool now that's uh, shortcut is B but that's um, let's see where is that? it's the paint bucket tool it's here somewhere you can find that and then we will press the command key on Mac that's probably the control key on Windows or something and we'll do that and erase the scene now it's obviously not perfect but um, it's pretty pretty tough to get exactly right. Let's see if we can get a little closer here. Texture, position, we can kind of adjust what we want to see here. So I think that's a better section of the wall. And then we will press enter. And then adjust the, uh, oops. Yikes. I don't want to get that. That's okay, because when you go to view and edge style, click off the edges, it's it's not gonna um, it's not gonna show that edge. Now that I see it, it's actually a little bit off though. So we'll go back and adjust that even again. Position. Okay, and uh, the same sort of process for down here. This is slightly more tricky, but what I'm gonna do is sample from this side. Take this, make a new texture. B. Control, fill. Actually, sorry guys. Sorry guys, I'm still working on it. So we'll go all the way down here, make a new texture from that whole thing. B, select fill, texture, position, and uh, try to line it up somewhere so that it makes sense. Yeah, it makes a lot more sense. Okay, and this wall, what we can do is just go straight to the paint bucket, select um, this texture from this side, and then apply it to this side, and that sort of makes it look um, similar. Now also what we can do is, I don't know if we could do this whole thing at once, but we'll try it. Make a new texture. Actually, what we'll do, we'll just copy this existing wall and paste it. We'll get our rotate tool. Put it on the edge right here, make sure it's along the right axis. Let's see if we're gonna be able to do this or not. Bring our scale tool, bring it all the way around. So we've basically just mirrored it. I'm gonna make it a component, which is uh, Command G probably that's going to be control G for you PC people. And uh, I'm going to scale this one more time, bring it to that edge. Okay, so as you can see, it's doing this weird thing here. That's called Z fighting, and your model will actually be rejected for that. So, what you're going to do is move it straight out on the green axis or whatever axis is uh, parallel with this, I guess perpendicular to your plane, and delete that wall, the interior wall. Select your move tool, move it back in there. Okay? And we're just going to use the same trick for the back of this building because, whoa. Because, um. Well, oh, okay, here's what we'll do. We'll just make it this color here. Right click, make unique texture. We've seen this trick before. Now, what's happening here is it's. It's, um. Not sampling it from the component, so. Right click, make unique texture, get out of the component view. There we go. Oops, I guess we'll do the we'll do the top um, one of these standard roofing uh, 
probably something like um, this would be fine. I guess we'll use this color for this piece there. And go go ahead and um, don't forget to get rid of these. They create excess polygons and it just makes your model a little bit more complex. So there's obviously a lot more to do here. Um, you shouldn't model an entire building from one angle. Basically what I've done is modeled this first section from this single angle. What you should really do is use multiple angles to model a, a building. And uh, what you'd want to do is basically do a photo match from this position and then perhaps this position and then this position. Sometimes that's not possible though with fences and things like that. So you have to do uh, your best with what you can. For um, for this, this isn't too bad. It's not a it's not a big critical building. I didn't do this back part back here. I will eventually. But for now, it's it's a pretty simple building. It's not like the Statue of Liberty where you need every bit of detail. Oh man, there's still some Z fighting there. Delete that. So uh, you would want to go back. Let's see if we can get another door in here. Just take this door here. We make a new texture, sample it, turn the building, paste it in there. I'm gonna delete that wall, that doorway because there was something fishy going on. Or perhaps we just don't know how to use this program. <laughs> Alright, so this is the case where I would just do the same trick that I showed you earlier. Select this, Control C, Control V, bring it out here, uh, make it a component. Rotate it so it's correct to what, the way that you want to use it. Let's see if I just do it again. and bring it into this space and then scale it up to fit the actual doorway. Now I'm noticing that this uh, door is actually upside down so what we'll do is we'll just turn it inside itself bring it down to this corner. kind of hard working in that little space. I'm going to bring it out here. Might as well put it on the front of the, the uh, opening. So, as you can see, the, you've got a little bit of an inclusion there caused by, I think it's uh, the car from the original photo or uh, whatever this trash can or whatever they've got laying out there um, but as you can see it's not a bad fit looks uh, looks it would look in place for somebody who didn't know they were looking for just be careful about finding some some places that aren't textured you always want to make sure that you texture all of your your building with with the actual photo texture, even if it's not exactly there. Okay. So guys, uh, I hope I, I hoped a little bit on that. Uh, maybe when I get a little bit better at this, I'll show you how to do it from a different angle uh, when I'm a little bit more sure of myself. So uh, I guess I will catch you on the next video.